Good morning and welcome to the FSR Advanced Webinar entitled A New Architecture for Gas Supply Security that will be presented today by Jacques de Jong, Senior Fellow at Klingendal International Energy Programme. My name is Magdalena Mosh and I'm a Training Coordinator at Florence Co. Regulation and I will be also moderating today's session. And uh, f first of all, I would like to apologize for our delay. If, unfortunately, winter is not a very pleasant season uh, for some of us. We had some technical issues, but right now we are ready to go. So uh, before we will connect with uh, Jacques de Jong, I would like to point out a couple of issues regarding the webinar agenda. So the first point is the introduction. So uh, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. Uh, so in this part, I will also explain very briefly the control panel that you can see right now in the upper right corner of your computer screen. Then we will proceed with the presentation of Jacques de Jong. Uh, in the third point, we will proceed with the Q&A. In this section, Jacques de Jong will answer for the questions submitted by the audience. And I will explain briefly how you can submit your questions in just a couple of seconds. And then the last point are the conclusions. And in this point, I will just conclude today's webinar with some final announcements. OK, so this is the control panel that you can see right now on your computer screen. Let me just uh, point out a couple of features that you can see in this control panel. The first one is this tiny little orange arrow. So if you would like to follow today's webinar on your full computer screen, you can always click here, and the control panel will be minimized and will remain on your screen. However, if you would like to use some other features of the control panel, you can always click on that, and the control panel will reopen immediately. However, if you would like to check something on the internet or something on your computer, but you would still like to remain connected to the webinar, you can click on the button below. So this is to minimize the window. And uh, then the, con the icon of the webinar will remain on your taskbar and you can connect to it whenever you wish. OK, and then below you have the hand raise tool. And this is the tool that I would like you to use right now. So if you can see if you can see the presentation and if you can hear me, just please click here. And then I will know that everything is fine and that we can proceed with the webinar. OK, however, if you have any technical issues right now, if, uh, if you will have any technical problems during the webinar, you can always use the question box that is here below. And this is also a place where you can submit your questions to our today's speaker. And we will try to answer for as many questions as possible. However, uh, please remember that uh, the time for Q&A is limited. Therefore, we would appreciate if your questions could be brief, because then we will have more time to answer for as many questions as possible. OK, I can see that you were clicking. Uh, a lot of you have clicked, so I'm very happy to, to know that everything is fine, that we can proceed. Uh, because right now, it's time to connect to our today's speaker. So I will unmute Jack right now. And Jack, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Perfectly. Thank you very much for being with us today. Right now, I will connect to your computer screen. I am doing this right now. So we should be able to see your presentation in just a couple of seconds. Perfectly. I can see your presentation. Therefore, I will leave you the floor, and you can go to the full screen mode. Thank you. And I will connect back to you in around 40 minutes. Good luck. Thank you, Magda. Um, thank you also, uh, Florence School, to uh, present uh, this uh, opportunity uh, and to give me uh, the floor to talk a little bit about a new architecture for EU gas supply security. And I hope that you can hear me all well. Uh, I have a little problem with my throat, but that is thanks to the, the weather, uh, which, by the way, is beautiful today here in The Hague. I'm sitting at the uh, location of the Klingendal Institute in the nice park that we have. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, uh, the trees are beautiful, uh, whatever, whatever is more. This is good for gas, by the way. This is good for uh, uh, gas um, uh, demand, uh, and it is good for selling gas as well. Well, I'm now, let's say, uh, running my introduction to this, uh, to this talk. Uh, the title that we have is an ambitious title for a four-party project that we run the last one and a half year uh, from Klingendal together with uh, the European University Institute and Wilton Park and also with uh, with FEM in, uh, in Milan. Uh, and uh, in that process, in that architecture, 
uh, we worked uh, towards uh, the uh, recommendation of a long-term vision uh, for the period after 2020 and also to include a shorter term vision up to 2020 as well and I will talk on that and by the way the whole project has been uh, disseminated uh, in a book uh, on which you can see the title uh, as well. Okay, when you start to think about a new architecture and you start to think about energy supply security then you have really to reflect on what is exactly what we mean uh, on that and usually uh, it is approached along the lines of availability of energy continuously uninterrupted and also let's say for end users and I'm going too fast uh, in my in my mode and that is what you see uh, that that the reflections that you have to have also on energy supply security is are we focusing on short term are we focusing on the long term uh, are we talking about supply or are we talking about delivery to final consumers uh, do we mean the commodity as such or do we include as well the wider system to bring the commodity to final consumers and are we also talking about the structure the organization of the market of the industry to provide the uh, the services um, and other questions are of course about responsibility who is responsible for energy supply security is it the consumer himself is it the final consumer uh, is it the supplier that uh, when he is entering into a contractual relationship with the consumer uh, includes also responsibility for uh, enhancing supply security uh, or is it some kind of a public service obligation type of approach where governments are playing a role and if governments should be playing a role which is usually the case then of course the other thing is about uh, to what extent is government playing a role uh, and the two extremes well no role whatsoever on the one hand and fully taking full responsibility with central planning on the other hand and there of course are many tastes in between and the way in which you are then further reflecting on that requires some kind of design approach some kind of a regulatory design on that okay well let's start with our questions uh, on it and i'll have a first question uh, for you uh, with the issue of responsibility and in that responsibility item of course you can think about the market or the government or to think about both now we start now with the question and i'll launch the question and to see to what extent you are giving a reaction and this is not a difficult question so I see already that the number of voters is increasing very sharply and you're doing a very good job we are now about 80 percent of all attendants have already voted uh, almost 80 percent 77 percent come on come on come on come on Come on, you have another couple of seconds uh, to vote before reaching the 80% uh, target uh, on that. Yes, we made it. So, and now we should go to sharing the results. And here it comes. Okay, okay. Well, this is, this is interesting. And I see that about 80% of everything, of everybody has said, yes, we think that it is both the market and the government okay now let's proceed on that again and go to the next question because if there is a role for government and i'm keeping you busy as well what focus should government have in pursuing its role should it be on the short term that would mean to manage unforeseen interruptions and then you can talk about crisis management or should the focus be much more on the long run, longer term, which could be interpreted as some kind of government to government relations with governments of supplier nations? 
And the third one is, of course, that you're not saying as a government, well, I don't care too much about crisis, I don't care too much about go-go relations, but I basically focus my attention on market designs and on regulatory designs. Okay, now let's move again to the next question and I'll be seeing what is going on. And here the votes are rolling in. Seventy percent. Eighty percent. Yes, very good. Within thirty seconds, almost ninety percent. I close and I'll share the results. And here they are. And this is nice. Eighty percent of you listeners attempts are saying that it should be number C, the market, market design, regulatory design. And also very remarkable that only 2% of you said the focus should be on the short term. Okay, very interesting. Okay, let's continue. Because if you are thinking about policy and if you're thinking about something to happen, on that, then you also have to reflect on how do I measure the effectiveness of my instruments. Uh, and uh, in uh, energy policy making, where supply security is only one of the elements, uh, the market and the economy, the competitiveness issue is, an, is another objective, and the sustainability issues is also another objective. And those other two objectives are relatively easy you know, measurable to quite some extent, which, by the way, is not so much the case in terms of supply security. How to assess supply security? Uh, is this a rationality issue? Or maybe is this an issue that is loaded with emotions as well? And, uh, well, reflecting on, 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 on this part of the, uh, of, the, of the approach and of the policy, uh, it would be useful to, to play around a little bit with with quantitative uh, elements in order to assess it. And what you see right now uh, on the slide is an example of that. Uh, a couple of years ago, we in Klingendaal together with ECN developed a supply demand index on a scale of zero to 100 in order to play around a little bit with the supply security uh, quantitative um, um, uh, options. Uh, a simplified version of our index was used by the OECD, uh, and this is one of the results that you can see of a number of countries on this scale from uh, zero to 100 uh, for uh, a number of uh, years um, in the past. And then you can see uh, to quite some extent that the uh, supply security uh, element, uh, gradually speaking, is improving a little bit over the last uh, 20 years. Now, another uh, calculation that we made was uh, uh, to uh, look ahead and to take, for instance, the forecast of the period up to 2020. And then you see a number of other developments uh, as well uh, taking place. And then you can try to compare that a little bit. Uh, and this is, well, this is, this is maybe a nice tool to play around a little bit, but uh, uh, it's only helpful in a certain sense. And, and you could think about, uh, yes, uh, to what extent should we really be, be, uh, be going uh, in that direction? And on that, yes, again, a question. Does an architecture for supply security means that we should focus or that we should try to work with objective quantitative standards and criteria? Or should we focus on a much more qualitative policy approach, or maybe it would also be useful to, uh, to, uh, do it, uh, to do it both. Poll open. I have lunch, the polling, so please proceed with voting. Okay, and I think that we can right now stop, and I am closing the poll, and I am sharing the result, and I will read it to you. So 75% uh, said that both, actually. So they chose the option number three. 
Okay, 18% has chose the number one and 7% has chose number two. So now I will hide the results. Yes. Okay, and they, so right now you can proceed with the presentation. Okay, okay, but there is a next question coming. Mm -hmm. Is there a role for the European Union? And this is an easy, an easy question. Either yes or no. Van Rompuy, Barroso, Oettinger, or even maybe good Lady Ashton. I'm launching the poll yep. so people can once again vote right now. So is there a role for the EU? Answer is yes and no. Okay, you are voting very fast, so let's just wait for more. Well, I have to say that you have made a very strong statement here, actually. So let's wait just a couple of more seconds. Okay. Well, I think that right now we can close. So Jacques, I will read the results to you. 98% said yes. Okay. Oh so only 2% say no. Okay. My God. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> if you combine the answers on question number four with the uh, answers on question number three, then uh, you are not excluding that there is some kind of a quantitative element in the role that the EU um, uh, should uh, should uh, should be playing. Anyway, okay, okay. Yeah. very interesting, yes. very interesting. I don't know if there are attendants from the European Commission and if they want to have some other advice on how to proceed then uh, of course uh, we're open to help them and to to give them uh, let's say the tools in hand to uh, to move on okay let's go on let's go on with the presentation with security of supply architecture because if we are moving ahead further then of course the question is uh, what are we talking about how much gas is needed uh, and 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 how do we know how much gas we need and is this a market issue or is this a policy issue that is also influencing the demand uh, of gas. And if we know a little bit how much gas which is needed, then we will have to secure our supplies. And, and, and again, this is then the question of how to organize our market. Uh, are the contractual relations, are they in good order and are they helping market parties to do so? And this is something, of course, which is very much the responsibility of market parties uh, themselves. Uh, is the system in place? Are the infrastructures right? To, uh, to approach this issue. Where should the supply come from? Should the supply come from within the EU uh, or should it uh, mainly be coming from abroad? And this is also something that we will have to uh, reflect on. And finally, uh, yes, let's not forget the adequacy of the system and the reliability of the, of the infrastructures. And yes, for those of you that voted for 2% that the focus should be on the emergency issue, on the solidarity issue, yes, we should not also uh, forget uh, about uh, that uh, as well. Now, where are we going? Let's try to tackle those questions a little bit uh, on the market and on the demand side. And when we take a, a long-term look on that, then uh, a relevant um, uh, tool for that is this, this, this sustainability uh, policy uh, issue where uh, we uh, are talking on road mapping uh, within the EU uh, on the way to 2050 and the European Commission uh, has helped us, uh, us with that, uh, with this roadmap 2050 also for especially for the energy sector uh, and uh, brought uh, a number one of um, uh, scenario analysis uh, that, that also helped to have an indication uh, on that. Uh, and uh, yes, it helps uh, also market parties to give a little bit more clue on that. Whether you are a supplier or a deliverer or a system developer or a, or a, a producer uh, and that wants to supply the EU market, uh, these uh, elements should always uh, uh, be focusing on, on, on giving more clue, uh, giving more information, giving more guidance uh, to base your, 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 your planning, your strategies, your investments uh, on, and so forth. Now, the outcome, uh, I guess, and we're all a little bit aware of that, that, that of the Roadmap 2050, uh, the four no-regret options that are always good uh, in further pursuing 
what we want to pursue, more electricity, more energy efficiency, more renewables, uh, yes, and smarter uh, and more uh, efficient uh, infrastructures uh, on that as well. Now, taking a somewhat closer look on, on the fuel mix that, that, that comes from a number of the scenarios, and then we are all aware of the fact that in 2030, the role of gas is not that much debatable, so about a 25% share in the fuel mix comes out of those scenarios. But if you look a little bit further, uh, then uh, the differences became much more pronounced, and that depends to a very much extent, of course, on the amount of renewables in the system, but also what will happen with the nuclear issue uh, as well. So. Uncertainties, uncertainties, are, uncertainties are, 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 are coming on. And uh, if you translate that into, for instance, the uh, results in terms of net gas imports, well, my God, then there is a big uncertainty uh, on the period uh, after summer 2020. And you see this variation already, but this variation increases even much more. Uh, and uh, this, 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 this margin between 200 MTOEs uh, on, on the one hand and more than 400 MTOEs on the other hand is, is substantial. So this is not very helpful, let's say, for the market. It is not very helpful uh, for the industry and especially it's not helpful either for, uh, for suppliers. So more needs to be done on that, uh, on that basis. Uh, and in addition to that, when we uh, expect uh, a changing role of gas in the electricity supply system, uh, then we see that the flexibility uh, on a very short-term notion uh, could uh, increase uh, dramatically, which is shown by, uh, by this slide, for instance, as an example uh, uh, on that. And this opens, let's say, all sorts of doors and all sorts of boxes for, for innovative thinking about uh, the role of gas uh, uh, in the system. Uh, and uh, new technologies, power to gas technologies, or even gas to power uh, type of uh, approaches uh, may very much be coming. Uh, and this requires also new investments. This requires also some kind of new designs, maybe. Um, uh, this uh, requires also maybe a rethinking about the role of gas storage. So it is not only about the role of gas in the mix. It is also about the role of gas in the system uh, as such. Uh, and and a, a little bit more refinement would be uh, uh, very much necessary to, uh, to, uh, to go ahead and could be part uh, of, an, of, an, of an architecture. Now, having talked on the demand side, now let's take a look at the supply side. And apparently there is not a problem especially if we are taking unconventional uh, resources into account uh, as well. Uh, and uh, golden age for gas, yes, golden age for gas, uh, yes or no, a question mark on it. Uh, the message uh, which is coming from the IEA and the message that is uh, supported by many people uh, in the industry. And, and, and well, this, this, this is of course amazing what, what, what is going on, especially if you compare that with some five years uh, ago. And this revolution that takes place, um, well, we all know it is basically going on in the United States, where we see a dramatic change, a game changer, because of the role of unconventionals. And this is one of the uh, examples that, 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 uh, that, that was given uh, in terms also of demand for LNG import, which is now about to turn in a situation that uh, the US will become a net exporter. Of, uh, of LNG, and this is an even more uh, fascinating uh, slide which comes from uh, Washington to give the indication, yes, uh, unconventional, or it's a golden future, and uh, the role of gas will totally change, uh, especially on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the supply side. Now, what about Europe? What about Europe? Uh, and uh, there are a number of uh, uh, arguments to be made why uh, maybe uh, what is happening in the U.S. will not be copied uh, in, in Europe. And one of the arguments is about, and I always tend to say it's thanks to Napoleon, uh, where the role of the state in uh, owning the, uh, the resources uh, is, is, is much more prominent 
the, in the United States, uh, and that 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 gives them a totally different, let's say, basis uh, for incentivizing uh, further development uh, of of resources. But okay, it, so be it, and uh, it is as it is, and and we have to take that up um, uh, as well. But but yes, this new supply balance. Uh, in, in not only in gas, also in oil, in hydrocarbons, uh, carbons, uh, uh, globally speaking, uh, will change also, let's say, the outlook for 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 the, the for the relations between uh, the various regions, uh, the uh, supply areas and the demand areas to a very large extent. And this is a very quick and maybe a little bit dirty uh, global picture to to uh, to put that online, where we can see, uh, yes, maybe. Uh, major supplies uh, for gas uh, to Europe uh, should more come from the east than from the south or from the west. Okay, okay, let's 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 move on. Let's move on because today's EU gas market is the market as we know it, uh, where the uh, demand centers are, where the flows are, where the where the pipelines are, where the terminals are. Uh, and again, uh, yes, uh, we cannot deny that 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 looking to the east is a prominent feature uh, on that. Uh, understanding also that uh, the diversity for our eastern friends uh, in in Russia uh, uh, brings more options, brings also diversification of export markets, uh, and uh, this is also something to be taken into account. Uh, where the expansion of gas trade links with China um, uh, will, will, will increase uh, to, uh, uh, to quite some extent and maybe even uh, uh, substantially. But, but okay, don't, don't worry too much on the European side. You could argue, you could think that the bulk of the, uh, of the Russian export uh, flows will continue to, uh, to, to move uh, to the west uh, instead of to the east. And, but the balance will change a little bit. Uh, and also options will change a little bit, and this is something that, uh, yes, we have to take into account as well. This is, of course, also a question about capacity, about the system, about adequacy of the, of the pipelines in this, uh, in this case. Uh, and yes, we, we, we have a number of options available that, that, that could be used. Uh, and uh, when you take into account those uh, expected uh, uh, figures that, that was shown earlier, uh, then you can see, well, maybe the present existing um, uh, infrastructure to bring gas uh, from Russia to European markets may be sufficient uh, if you taking a look at all the black uh, uh, and also the black shaded uh, blocks in this, in this slide. And if that is the case, yes, well, this is something to reflect on. This is something really reflect on, and we're all aware that uh, that last week uh, the uh, first spade was put in the ground, so to say, to uh, to start uh, building the South Stream pipeline and especially the uh, offshore uh, component of it. Uh, but yes, well, okay, it would create, of course, uh, let's say further options, uh, and this is the way uh, in which Gazprom is looking at this issue. Uh, and uh, it would bring also some more balancing uh, in, in managing uh, their uh, options for uh, bringing uh, gas via pipelines uh, from the east to, uh, to European markets. So uh, let's not forget uh, on that. But it does not mean that we should not uh, hide away from this uh, new Caspian uh, game that is ongoing, uh, the Azeri gas. Uh, and, uh, it will be quite busy uh, if you look at all the uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, connections and, and, and pipelines uh, in, in that region. And this is something to, uh, to be aware of uh, also very much. And this translates then again to uh, the uh, pipeline capacity that is uh, being uh, developed uh, and that is being uh, planned. So let's wait and see on how that all moves. Uh, but this would, of course, also bring more challenges uh, for the European Union to uh, to 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 manage uh, the the governance uh, of its uh, external energy diplomacy. Uh, and uh, here again, but with this 80% uh, 
uh, of uh, the voters um, uh, saying that yes, there is a role uh, uh, for the EU where, where, where also government to government relations uh, should be uh, uh, included. Uh, uh, okay, this, this is underlining uh, the necessity of that, uh, of that challenge. And this brings us again to the next question. Mm -hmm. I am here, so I will launch the question. Okay. External supplies. Russia will remain our main supplier, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, people are voting very fast, so let's give them a couple of seconds more. Okay. Very fast. Couple of more seconds. Two more seconds. Okay, so right now I'm closing the poll and I will share the results with you. Jacques, I will read them to you. So 56% said yes and 44 no. Okay, interesting, mm -hmm. interesting, interesting. Okay. So this, 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 this is developing, of course. Uh, but there is another question as well. Mm -hmm. Should okay. then EU gas policy focus on attractiveness for foreign suppliers, so that means more an external element, an external focus, or should the focus be more internally to, uh, to, uh, to enhance further internal market competitiveness? Okay, again, very fast. But we will give a couple of more seconds, so please think wisely about choosing the right answer. Couple of more seconds. I can see that you are still voting. Okay, two more seconds. Okay, I am closing the poll right now. And I'm sharing the results with you. And Jack, 69% uh, chose the enhancing internal market competitive, competitiveness. So the second option. And 31% said the first one. So attractiveness for foreign suppliers. Okay, okay. My conclusion is that then apparently more work needs, needs to be done on, on, on the internal market. And, and, and if I may say it in those terms, that the present market design uh, that, that has been embodied in, in uh, the gas target model, to, to name one, uh, apparently will not be the right one or will not be sufficient one. Okay, and if that mm -hmm. is a conclusion that you're not sharing, then uh, you can challenge me in the Q&A session on that as well. Okay, now moving on further, moving on further. Okay, let's not forget internal solidarity, eh? because there apparently uh, in the audience there's not that much interest uh, in that. Uh, but when you're talking to your colleagues in Central and Eastern Europe, you hear different stories, you hear different views, uh, and uh, enhancing internal solidarity may be, let's say, not that difficult in theory, but in practice uh, it is a much more difficult thing where there are numerous relationships involved that have to be uh, taken into account. But thanks to uh, the European Commission and the uh, European Council, uh, we now have a, a regulation that uh, helps us uh, to secure gas supply, uh, which more or less is some kind of a crisis um, mechanism, uh, and uh, the implementation of that crisis mechanism uh, is, is, is furthermore ongoing, and, and fortunately, well, it, 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 it has not been necessary to, to, to use it fully, uh, but you never know what will happen in the future. Uh, and some more detailed uh, articulation might be a good thing uh, to do as well. So again, solidarity, an issue. And I think that I'm now about, yes, to, uh, to uh, sum up a little bit, uh, at least uh, where we are in our thinking and what the results are of the uh, project that I was referring to when I try to share with you uh, some of the findings uh, so far. Uh, and uh, these findings you can see here that yes, a gas specific quantified target for supply security may not be the only or the right policy path to follow. Uh, and it would be useful also to have a little bit more clue 
on uh, the role of gas uh, both in the mix and in the system. Uh, and if you have a little bit more tightness on that and a little bit clearer view on that, then that could help, of course, to uh, enhance your uh, external relations and to move in the direction of a more effective um, energy um, uh, diplomacy, building global confidence between consumers uh, and suppliers. And on the way towards that, then it also might be useful to make this distinction between the, 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 the shorter term period, let's say up to 2020, and the period beyond um, uh, 2020, because up to 2020, basically all our policies are more or less in place and we are working on implementing them, whereas the policies for the period after 2020 are still in a process of, 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 of discussing and debate uh, and, and, uh, and reflection. And, and, and then finally, role of markets, yes, and of infrastructures, let's not forget about them. They're still essential elements, should be essential elements in any type of architecture for uh, gas supply security for the European Union. Now, having said that, uh, we come to, yes, uh, what are the recommendations that have come out of our project and recommendations that have been published, uh, not only in a book, but also in a policy brief uh, on, on, on the FSR website and on the uh, Klingendal uh, uh, website as well. Making this distinction between uh, the long-term vision uh, it would be useful uh, very much to, to, to be a little bit more precise uh, about the role of gas in the energy system. Uh, not only uh, with respect to, uh, again, uh, the share of gas in the fuel mix, but also the uh, changing role of gas uh, in the, uh, in especially in the electricity system. And when that is done, then that would be helpful let's say, to focus on the external side with our external suppliers. Uh, and they are listed uh, on the slide. Uh, uh, and transit issues, of course, should not be forgotten on this as well. But I was it, wasn't it 70% of you that said, yes, we should focus in particular also on our internal market design. Uh, and uh, in this long-term vision, this really has to be taken up again, uh, where uh, the market design, uh, the role of hubs, the business models, and so on and so forth, which basically is something that uh, is for market parties to decide very much on their own. Uh, but uh, it cannot be denied that public uh, policy and regulatory approaches should be uh, very critical elements in, 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 in facilitating uh, these uh, these developments and therefore also regulatory designs, but also uh, what to do with our infrastructures and are the way in which our infrastructure uh, system is organized, is this the most efficient one, uh, especially when more cross-border issues are at place, uh, should also be encompassed in this, in this, in this, call it this vision uh, on uh, the internal EU uh, gas market. Now, on the short term, the uh, issues may be a little bit more uh, uh, self-explanatory, um, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, I guess that that we tend to agree on all of them that we should go on uh, and and don't waste too much time on on implementing and on refining. Uh, just go to work uh, with respect to the infrastructure package. Just go to work with the uh, finalization of all the network codes. Uh, and of the uh, certification process of the TSOs. Uh, and let's also reflect on the prioritization of, of the workloads for, for Acer uh, and for some others uh, involved. Let's not forget to solve the still pending uh, issues uh, that uh, are on the table between the EU on the one hand and Russia, our main supplier, uh, on the other hand, because it is not uh, very uh, productive uh, if these issues uh, that are on the table uh, continue to uh, to drag on. And then finally, on the solidarity issue, again, uh, let's complete and let's more in particular articulate the components of the uh, regulation on uh, gas uh, supply security. And this completes 
my talk and uh, I'm now looking to Magda and I know how she looks like. So Magda, I'll give it back to you and uh, the floor is yours again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jacques, for your presentation. So now we can just uh, very quickly proceed to the Q&A. But before we start, I would like to just point out that uh, there were many questions submitted already, and uh, thank you very much for that. However, I think that we won't have enough time to answer for all the questions. So you can see right now on the computer screen that there is an email to Jacques, and uh, I hope, Jacques, that you won't mind to, to answer for some of the questions after the webinar if uh, someone would like to contact you. I'm looking forward uh, to it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is the email, so you can write it down right now. Uh, but let's proceed to, to the Q&A. So the first question will be, will U.S. LNG export to the e European Union become an option to limit Russian supplies? Well, any option that would help to manage in a more balanced way uh, dependence on uh, Russian supplies to the EU market is a is a useful one and is a welcome one and we have already of course more than one option and LNG is, is, is one of the options on the table uh, you can debate to quite some extent uh, to what extent LNG exports from the US to European markets will uh, will be an, uh, uh, adding a, a substantial weight uh, on that. Uh, uh, well, it seems that the uh, uh, US now is about to conclude that it will allow uh, some of the terminals to be uh, to be used as an uh, as an export for LNG. Uh, and yes, um, uh, prices and, and 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 distances and also competing other markets will 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 make the case for that. Uh, uh, personally, I am not too optimistic uh, about uh, the increasing role of the uh, US uh, for global gas markets. And I would be very much uh, 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 surprised if uh, in 10 years time, uh, the US will become uh, a, a more important supplier to EU markets than Russia is today. Okay, thank you for that. The next question will be a short uh, clarification. So what does it mean? What's the SD index? Well, I can give a very short answer and look at the uh, uh, publications that we have put uh, on our website. Uh, basically, it's a tool to, uh, uh, to, to, to calculate uh, the, uh, the interaction between a supply uh, and demand uh, in a certain market, but to do it system broad, so uh, you include as well uh, all, also all the all the uh, all the system uh, uh, infrastructures that are necessary uh, in order to uh, bring a raw material uh, as a final uh, energy carrier to uh, to uh, to energy consumers. Okay, and the next question will be, how does security of supply interact with environmental policy? Well, this is about a triangle. This is about <laughs> a triangle uh, between an, a competitive market, uh, affordability uh, in pricing terms, uh, supply security and environmental issues. And, and this is an ongoing debate in energy policy making, I must say, and that uh, over, the, uh, over the years, we have seen some changes where the emphasis is. Uh, there is always some kind of an, uh, of an interaction uh, in that as well. People could say uh, in today's debate that the more renewables we put in the system, uh, the more domestically produced they are, uh, the better that is for supply security. But I guess you are all aware of the fact that uh, the renewables uh, requires, especially if it is increasing fast, uh, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, amendments and adjustment to, to the to the system in order to manage the uh, intermittency characteristics of, of renewables. So there's always an issue where a balance has to be found uh, in policy making, and we're not always making the right balance. But this is an ongoing debate. And the next question is about the role of gas in the longer term fuel mix and what would what is and what would be perspective of suppliers on that? Well, 
to supply gas from outside the EU, but also from inside the EU to EU markets um, uh, anyway requires more investments. Uh, and the gas value chain uh, usually is, 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 is as such that you are only starting to invest in developing a new field or a new source when you have some kind of clarity and assurance and confidence on the whole value chain up to the final consumer. Uh, that means that all intermediate steps will have to be secured to, 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 to some extent on that. And you are not moving in that direction if you at least don't have a feel, let's say, about what the role uh, in a more global way of gas in the, in the EU uh, uh, mix uh, and in the uh, EU energy system will be. Uh, you, you, you require a little bit more confidence in moving on that and also it's not only the producer with the investment this is also the infrastructure company it's also the midstream uh, companies um, uh, it's also the final consumer that has to uh, move in certain uh, directions so a little bit more clarity about uh, the role of gas uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the mix and in the energy system especially for the period uh, after 2020 when we really are intending to move further ahead in the, in the direction of a, of, a, of a low or maybe even a zero carbon energy economy uh, is, is, is more than necessary. Okay, so I think that we will still have time for one or maybe two questions. So let's try with this one and we'll see how much time we'll have left. Uh, so the question will be, why should external suppliers invest in the coming years for deliveries between 2020 and 2050 when the EU demand uncertainty is 50%? That's a good question because uh, they should uh, uh, invest uh, when they think that uh, the EU market uh, still is an attractive market for them. Uh, and this is something that uh, on the level of the EU we should articulate a little bit more. Uh, not only about forecasting our demand but also about um, uh, arranging uh, the market model in such a way that uh, suppliers, uh, that uh, all other uh, parties uh, that are active or that want to be active in the gas value chain feel confident enough to, uh, to make investments and to enter uh, the market. And not forgetting that it is always some kind of a longer term process that is, taking, uh, that is, that, 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 that is happening and that has to be taken into account. Uh, so uh, uh, I would gather that if there is more clarity and if there's more confidence on the two sides, then uh, the future of gas uh, in the EU uh, will uh, be a win-win situation for all um, uh, elements of the industry involved. And uh, yes, that may, may then again be a situation where the question mark after the golden age for gas uh, will, be, will be dropped and that it is not a question anywhere and that, yes, we are entering a new era for the gas industry. Okay, so we now have the time still for the last question. And the last question will be, what is the role of storage and how should those infrastructures be managed and paid for? Should it be government or consumers? This is always a question uh, where uh, you uh, should uh, reflect on a case-by-case -case basis to what extent uh, I would say some kind of socialization of cost would be would be necessary uh, on the one hand, and uh, what is the other element that uh, that should be paid by by market parties, both in storage, but also in in uh, the pipeline infrastructure, more in particular. Uh, and when this role of gas in the system is changing, where much more short termism is 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 on the table. Uh, that, that, that would require systems that would be able to cope uh, on a day-by-day -day basis with uh, maybe even substantial amounts uh, of, uh, of gas uh, uh, as well. And, and, and that has to be reflected and new innovative approaches uh, are already mentioned, are already on the table. And, uh, a, a new uh, adaption of already existing technologies uh, uh, could also play an, a very interesting role 
uh, and uh, again, as I said, on a case-by-case -case basis, the financing uh, has to be secured basically by market parties, uh, but wherever necessary, some kind of a socialization uh, uh, could also be necessary, especially when uh, some of that infrastructure is 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 uh, needs also needs also some kind of of of, of, of regulated approach as well. Okay, thank you very much, Jacques, for, for having you uh, today during the webinar. And now it's time to say goodbye, unfortunately. So I have to say goodbye to you. Thank you My very pleasure. much. Thank you very much, Magda. See you again. Thank you. Thank you. And right now I will, uh, I'm using Jack and I'm continuing with my presentation. So very quickly, I will proceed to my computer screen. I'm doing this right now. So you will be able to see my presentation in just a couple of seconds. Yes, you can see that right now. So I will just conclude today's session with some final announcements. And, and the first announcement is, as always, when I will close this webinar, uh, automatically on your computer screen will appear a survey, which is consisted of eight questions. And I would really appreciate if you could fill out this uh, questionnaire in this way. We'll be able to evaluate today's session and also make some improvements in the future. And on Friday, uh, all of you will receive a follow-up email from me. Well, I will thank you for attending in today's webinar. And you will also find the link in that email where it will be possible to download PDF uh, of today's webinar and also watch the recording from today's webinar. And uh, the recording from the webinar will be also available on our YouTube channel on Friday. Moreover, in this email, you will find the link to register for the next webinar. And the next webinar will take place on 22nd of January in 2013, always at 11, this time 11 sharp. And the topic of this webinar will be new issues in gas transmission tariff regulation in the competitive and shrinking market. And the presenter of this webinar will be Sergio Ascari, who is a gas advisor here at Florence School of Regulation. Okay, so you can register for this webinar by using the link in the follow-up email, or if you would like to do it right now, you can go to our website, and uh, this is the view of our website from yesterday, and uh, basically in here right now, this part should be updated, and you will be able to click on that, and by clicking on it, you can register for the next webinar that will take place on the 22nd of January. And furthermore, if you want to receive more information about FSR training, you can go to the training section here and you might be interested in that because uh, today we opened the application for the specialized training course on regulation of gas markets the edition in 2013 this time it will take place between 11 and 15 of March and the deadline for application is 1st of February uh, we have modified this training this year and I'm very happy to say that also webinars will be included in the course so uh, I want to give you more information right now I would like you to uh, if you are interested that you can always contact me or you can go to the website to find more information. However, remember that the deadline is 1st of February for submitting your application. Okay, so these are the contacts. So if you have any questions regarding the webinars on any other trainings organized here at the FSR, you can use the email that you can see right now on your computer screen. And again, below there is the email of Jacques de Jong if you have any questions regarding the content of today's webinar. And on behalf of Florence Co Regulation, I would like to wish you Merry Christmas and Happy 2013. I hope that you will find from time to time some time to join us for the webinars. And until then, I would like to wish you a wonderful day. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>